Hey everyone, welcome back, and this is episode two of A Step by Step by Jake Richards. And in today's episode, we'll be talking about washes and filters for the Malkador and Furnace. Let's get going. So the goal today is to bring out more contrast in the model. In last episode, we established the base color coats, and now we're going to start making a little more tonal variation and also some interest. I start the process off by applying a dark brown oil washer and also mix it with some Oil Expert by VMS. Make sure you use the matte stuff because it will create some nice contrast between the satin varnish we have based on the model. And this will create some nice interest between the different uh, textures and appearances between a satin and a flat area wash that we're using now. In my more recent models, I've gone to using oil washes to create my contrast and my definition of my models. I do like using my ready-made enamel products, but I find there are numerous actual little nuances that can be achieved with using oil washes that are very beneficial when you're creating a model like this. For one, the washes spread very nicely and you can create different opacities using the oil wash. Oil washes are obviously derived by oil paint and oil paints can last you for a very long time. That being said, you also get a bonus effect. It's almost like a filter ahead of when you're doing your filtering stage. Now when I go back and start blending the, the wash, which you'll see later on, I don't just take it away like I would with an enamel product. This is more of a blending subtraction element that comes with when you're taking the wash off. It doesn't just take it off completely like you would with the glossy surface, but with this satin surface and also that's a oil wash. A little bit remains in the back. I mean, you can always reverse the entire effect by really scrubbing it but you always get that nice residual softness that comes with removing the wash. You get the nice stark outlines like you see here in the deep recesses and panels, but also if I need to remove any excess, it creates a nice subtle variation effect between the dark areas and branching out to the lighter areas where the wash has been removed. Also at this point, it's worth noting that I do use the VMS Oil Expert because it's a great product to throw in with my oil wash. It makes the oil dry a lot faster and it also makes it so it's rock hard after its application. There's no need to clear coat it later on. Okay, and at this point now you can see I'm taking a cleaning pass after letting the oil paints sit for a bit, cure up, and I want to create or clean up the areas I might have gone a little too overboard with. Now you can see what I was talking about earlier when you take an oil wash and you blend it out with the cleanup process. You don't just have a stark line where the wash begins and ends. You can see that it's a nice definition on the panel there, but it doesn't just have this clean blender animation look to it. it it's gradual, it's, it's nice. And I, I like the fact that I actually am applying a pre-filter while I'm doing this step. It makes it so it blends very nicely with the effects I apply later on. Once I'm done cleaning up the washer on my model, it's time to begin the process of applying oil dot filters. Now I will go back and use the oil brushes again at this point and start establishing my dots of different color. For this one, I or this project I should say, I decided to use an off-white, you really can't tell <laughs> the way how the lighting is in this one, a yellow and a brown color. These are all colors that are naturally occurring in this environment that this tank will be because the yellow simulates a faded effect, white simulates some dust, and the brown can either be dirt or a rust color. So the way that I do this, I put the lighter dots in areas where more lights could be exposing the paint, uh, creating a nice fade effect. And then I also use the yellow, the same effect at that point. And I use the darker rust color or the, uh, the brown color to establish some shadows or some, you know, anywhere I think there's some rust can accumulate. Actually, I mean, there's no real wrong placement to this, but you can use the oil colors to create some highlights and uh, some uh, shadows to create some definition if you really want to. Overall, it's a great way to add some interest to the colors and uh, just go from there. Thank you. 
Once my oil dots are in place, I take a larger brush like this and have it very, very, very mildly dampened with some mineral spirits and begin a nice downward brush motion on the sides to more or less just blend the colors in with each other and create a nice faded effect. I'm not after removing every bit of the oil paints. I just want to create a nice a little, a smudge effect, if you will. It, it, if you try it out, you'll see what I'm talking about. So it's good to note that on the sides of the tank, I use an up and down motion. And on the flatter surface of the tank, I use more of a bumping motion where it's just kind of, you know, stippling back and forth. You want to keep it flat. You don't want to create new lines like the tank is moving at a million miles an hour. I mean, maybe it does, I don't know. But this thing's as slow as a snail in my mind. And once the blending process is done, that's all for this episode. At this point, I just let the model cure over, let's say, a day or two. Just let it set up and I, I get ready to do the next fun process of chipping. Anyways, that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. If you feel inclined, please hit the like and subscribe button. It'll help the channel out. And I look forward to presenting part three of this series. I'm Jake Richards. Until next time, have a great one.